Hello beautiful people, my name is Vendi, and today I have a little book review for you guys. The book I'm going to be discussing today is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. So I found out really recently that in this entire year, so all of 2018, there are only going to be four books written by black women about black women. Total. That sort of lack of parody in publishing is a huge disservice both to readers and to bookstores and to just about everyone in the publishing industry. Life imitates art and art imitates life and I feel like until our art steps up the representation game, real life isn't going to catch up. I think we'd all benefit from reading some more diverse stories and because of that, since there's only four books coming out, I am going to pick up, read, and review every single one of them to hopefully encourage you guys to pick them up and enjoy them as well. Because I really think that not just for the sake of diversity, but because they're just really good stories, I think that they're worth reading. So without further ado, let's get into my review of The Bells. So as I'm sure you all know by now, The Bells follows Camille, and she is a bell. A bell is a person who has control over making things and people beautiful through a type of magic they call arcana. They're super highly coveted in this world that they live in called Orleans, because in Orleans people are born gray with rotten straw colored hair and like literally gray, pale, kind of icky, dead oatmeal skin. It's just people are kind of ugly. And because beauty is widely commodified, because everyone's kind of ugly, the bells are highly sought after commodities. Every, I want to say 20 years, a new generation of bells is brought into society and they compete to see which one of them has the greatest mastery over the arcana. And our girl Camille, she doesn't want to just be any old bell working in any old place. She wants to be the favorite bell, which is the bell that lives in the palace and tends pretty much exclusively to the royal family and to their guests. It's a really esteemed high class position and her mother was the favorite bell of her generation, so Camille really, really wants to be the one for her own generation. But she gets to the palace and it turns out not every Everything is quite as it seems, not only for the bells, but for the normal folk as well. And Camille has to decide whether she's going to stay complicit in what's going on at the palace, or if she's going to try to save herself and her bell sisters. So I really liked the bells as a story. I'm sure you've all heard that a story has to be more than its premise to be a good thing, and the bells definitely was, but I think the premise was absolutely fascinating as well. Despite being very rooted in a fantastical world, the bells was about some pretty serious issues that sort of plague our society to this day, specifically the commodification of beauty and the absolutely ridiculous beauty standards that women in particular are held to. But I'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to start with my favorite part of any story, and that would be character. So our protagonist, Camille. I adore Camille so, so, so much. She's ambitious. She's sulky. She's sullen. She's selfless. She's brave. She's sweet. She's wonderful. She's caring. She's angry. And she's a million other things in between. I I don't think you can read Camille without falling absolutely in love with her. I know I certainly couldn't read her without falling in love with her. Even though she was annoying sometimes with the decisions she made, every single one of them made sense considering her character and what we know about her up until that point. She was an absolutely phenomenal leading lady, and for the most part, the ensemble cast around her was, you know, they could, they could hold their own next to her, which is pretty difficult considering how high Camille raised the bar. That said, there were a couple of characters, particularly Amber, one of the other Bells, who felt a little bit two-dimensional. A lot of their actions felt as though they were there to move the plot forward and they were a little bit inconsistent. Amber in particular suffered from this. She was Camille's best friend when they were younger and training to be Bells together. What really kind of made me iffy about her character was the differences between how she acted and what Camille told us about her. So Camille told us she was this wonderful, amazing, pedantic girl, and she is definitely pedantic, but I'm not really getting wonderful or amazing vibes from Amber. She really didn't treat Camille very well. And I know that any story narrated in the first person, as The Bells is from Camille's point of view, is going to have some implicit biases that the narrator brings to it. But despite that, Amber still felt a little bit off. Additionally, some of the villains felt a little bit two-dimensional at times, like I didn't understand their motivation for doing the things they did, and the love interest guys felt a little bit forced at times, but that was absolutely fine because The Bells isn't about a romance. The crux of the story is very much Camille's journey, so it made sense to me that this story was focused mostly on Camille and how she was thinking and what she was feeling at XYZ time. The one thing 
that I kind of wanted from this that I feel like I didn't get was I kind of wanted um, some some girl gang vibes, right? And we did sort of in Camille's reflection on her time when she and the other bells of her generation were being trained to be bells. I think in book two we're gonna get a lot more of an ensemble cast of kick-ass ladies sort of tearing down a society that's been created to keep them subjugated. But as for the bells, it was very much Camille's story all about her, and that was absolutely fine. I absolutely loved reading her, but it did sometimes feel like we were stuck in her head a little too much considering just the vast and really diverse cast of side characters that there were to play with as well. So on to world building and setting. Remember how I talked about the themes of the bells before? I feel like they can be summed up into one word, and that word is decadence. Everything about this story is so beautifully lush. All of the descriptions, all of the things that we get to see, everything that Camille notices, it's so rich and delicious and beautiful. I just want to eat it all up. Even the prose was flowery and lush and slow moving like molasses and decadent and it felt sometimes while reading like I was swimming through this sweet bath of sugar with flower petals dusted on top and that doesn't sound very good but it was. It was really nice and I think that the prose, like the rich floweriness of the prose, complemented the atmosphere of the story beautifully. But at the same time, it was simple enough that I wouldn't hesitate, really, to give the bells to a 13-year-old. I don't think that it's, strictly speaking, a story for the older half of YA. I think it very squarely falls into the YA readership. However, I would. Mm. There are things that happen that I'll talk about in the spoilery section that would make me hesitate before giving this book to a 13-year-old. Basically, the rules of this world and its magic were very easy to follow. It was really fun to watch Camille sort of figure out the twists and turns and the rules of this society that even she's been slightly sheltered from. So we got to discover it along with her, which I think really added to the story that we learn as she does. And the social commentary about the commodification of beauty and the commodification of women in particular was on point. It was never preachy. It always blended very well with the story as it was, but it definitely had something to say about our world that we live in. And I think it was really valuable to get that without having it, you know, pull you from the story. Like getting to discover the dark and twisted side of Orleans was so addicting. I could hardly put the book down and I really felt the tension pretty consistently throughout. One of the things that kind of bothered me though was the pacing. It did feel a little inconsistent where the beginning was just a bit too slow and the ending was just a little bit too fast. I felt like there was a lot of world building info dump at the beginning that I think could have actually been dispersed more consistently, shall we say, throughout the rest of the story. I really enjoyed The Bells. I gave it a 3.7 out of 5 stars. And you might be thinking, why, why not like 4 or even 5? And if you want to find out, you'll have to stick around for the spoilery sections. So overall, I really, really enjoyed The Bells, except for one or two little things that I... they keep nagging me the more I think about it. Big trigger warning for some lesbophobia, so homophobia, but specifically for women loving women, and another big trigger warning for sexual assault. So the kill your gaze trope is one that, as a bisexual woman, I am super not fond of. I got little red flags at the very start of this book when I heard the word dandy or dandies used to refer to fashion savvy men, and it was sort of in a negative context, so that was a little bit eh, to me right then and there, but you know, it sort of tapered off towards the end. And then the climax of the story happened, and Princess Sophia has Camille and Amber murder a closeted lesbian, though Sophia clearly knows that she's gay, and it's... she, she dies as a plot device. It didn't really need to happen. Sophia could have had Camille arrested for conspiring against the throne anyway, basically with all of the information that she'd been fed. It was an unnecessary murder that sort of just served to make Sophia seem more evil. The fact that it was a gay woman that was murdered just, it really, really rubbed me the wrong way. I don't think it would have been better if she killed a straight person or an asexual person. Not in the slightest, right? The killing didn't need to happen. But the fact that it was a gay woman, the fact that it fits really squarely into the kill your gays trope, like all we really knew about her was that she was gay. It was very much, hmm, you are a lesbian, now you are dead. And I, I have so many problems with that. So 
that definitely brought my rating of this down. My second trigger warning for sexual assault, there was an attempted rape scene in The Bells and there was the implication that rape had occurred off screen to other women, specifically other Bells as well. So Sophia's cousin Alfred, this big rich guy who's, you know, sort of known to be, it's like a, it's a, it's an insider secret that he's kind of a trash fire of a dude. He requests um, Camille's services to make him prettier because guys go through these changes as well. And when he gets into Camille's room to, for her to, you know, start fixing him up, doing his hair and skin and whatever other cosmetic surgery, essentially, that he wants from her, he, he tries to have sex with her against her will. Again, we really didn't see this coming, and then he threatens her by saying, well, if you don't do it, I'm just gonna go and rape one of your bell sisters that are at one of these other tea houses, and, you know, the mistresses that own these tea houses, they're not gonna tell me no. And it's disgusting. I mean, it doesn't ever get too graphic, but it is one of the reasons that I'd shy away from giving this book to someone in the younger half of the YA readership, someone, I don't know, between ages 12 and 15. It sort of happens out of the blue, like we know he's a ladies' man and stuff, but he out of nowhere just grabs Camille, and I, I, this one I understand a little bit more than, you know, the kill your gays one. I guess it was part of Camille's wake-up call that, you know, the bells aren't considered people the way people are. And I do admire that she called for his punishment, requested that he be banished, and the queen agreed to that. And she's like, yeah, like, call him a sex offender, make it public. And she's like, we can't do that. But we will send him away where he can't, you know, have access to bells again. But then he gets off scot-free. And I know that's pretty realistic, considering the way that in the United States we treat men accused of sexual harassment. Like, oh, it's locker room talk. But it's still really bothered me just the way it was handled, all of it, and the fact that he wasn't really characterized beyond being, I am Sophia's cousin. No, I am going to rape you. I don't know, if he was a little more fleshed out, if the gay woman that was killed, hold on, what's her name? Claudine, sorry. If Claudine was a little more fleshed out, right, so if it wasn't, she is the gay one who is now dead, and if he wasn't, he is this dude and now he's a rapist. Like, if they had more substance to their characters, perhaps these things wouldn't bother me so much and I would understand them a little more in context of, you know, things that are necessary to the plot. It wouldn't seem like these were plot devices rather than characters and things that sort of needed to happen to move the story where it had to go. Then I might be a little more okay with it, but they weren't and it felt like a cheap way to have commentary about a thing. These things that I have an issue with in no way detracted from my enjoyment of the rest of the story. I still absolutely love The Bells. I can't wait for book two, I can't wait for book three, and I'm definitely gonna be reading just about anything Danielle Clayton puts out because she really nails atmosphere with her writing. Alrighty guys, so that is it for my review of The Bells. If you haven't already, I highly encourage you to pick it up. So The Bells is also an own voices novel. I'm <laughs> very much not a black woman, so I don't know how one walks through the world as a black woman. And because of that, perhaps I'm not the best person to review The Bells. So in the description box below, I will have some own voices reviews for you to check out. In addition to needing more diverse writers and more diverse stories, I think we need more diverse reviewers because I'm not gonna know how to judge a book about a black woman as well as a black woman will know how to judge a book about a black woman. It's completely different lived experiences. And I think that we all, as people who watch book reviews, would benefit from hearing voices of people who actually know what it's like to live these stories, not just enjoy them the way I did. Alrighty guys, that's it from me. I really hope you'll pick up the bells, and I will see you next time in a new video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you like me, maybe consider subscribing. Camille says you should, and you know, she's, she's pretty great, you should listen to her. But that's all I have for you today, and I will see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye!